And so what you have at your disposal as a DJ is a voice. Knowing when to say and when not to say. What to say and what not to say. But creating a unique, engaging, fun personality that they will want to connect with. You are now listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. The show is designed to help you grow your mobile app audience and get advice from experts in your industry. Now, here's your host, Sean Garvey. Hey, what's going on, family? It's the architect himself, Sean Garvey, the host of BV Mobile Apps Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you want to learn more information about BV Mobile Apps or if you are in the market of getting your app customized, what are you waiting for? Go to their website right now, bvmobileapps.com. That's bvmobileapps with an S at the end, dot com. Get your app customized today, bvmobileapps.com. Today's show, we are going to talk about the benefits of joining a professional DJ association. And it is with great pleasure that I have this gentleman on the telephone line. He is the CEO of the American this Jockey Association, and he is also a client of BV Mobile Apps. And we would like to present to you the one and only Dr. Drax. Hey, good evening, good hey. day. How's it going? It's going great, Sean. Good to talk with you. You know what? You deserve a round of applause there because I've been waiting to talk to you for quite some time, and we are just very honored to have you on the telephone lines to give uh, young talent and people coming up in the industry uh, professional advice on how to join a professional DJ association. So we really are appreciative that you took time out of your busy schedule to speak to us today. Not a problem. Happy to do that. We love BV Mobile Apps. Let's talk about the American Disc Jockey Association, a very big organization. How did the association come about? Oh, it came about because uh, some DJs got together and decided to try to start an association, and they did. And, you know, as it happens with DJs and egos and things, it went through a number of machinations, uh, you know, people coming, people going. Uh, but really it's been very solid since about 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, the organization has grown. We are the world's largest association for mobile disc jockeys. And uh, I think it's evident by the significant benefits we have, the education we have. No other association can touch what we do. I want to dig a little deep into uh, you coming up in the industry and, and Dr. Drax. Um, you've, been, you've been doing this for quite some time. I got started DJing back in the 70s. DJed on radio, did some mobile stuff back then. But largely, I thought, yeah, this is this is not where the money's at. Well, went to college, got a degree, you know, in uh, lasers, came out, worked in there, went to a lot of parties. The DJs were terrible, and I'd be, you know, do you have this? No. Would you play it if you did? Giving them a compact disc, play this song, play this song, play this song, and basically, friends said, you know, well, why aren't you doing this? And I go, because they don't make any money. And they challenged me to say, you mean you can't make any money? And I said, no, I don't know. So I went out and researched, developed a business plan, figured out what it would take to actually be able to replace my engineering income and be a full-time mobile DJ. And so I crafted my entertainment company and went forward with that and have been very successful. I joined the ADJA in 2000. Uh, I was elected to the board of directors in 2000, uh, I want to say 2002. Okay. And in 2005, I became the president and CEO of the American Disc Jockey Association. And I'm, interested in hearing it's a great segue by the way is it i'm interested in hearing the benefits of joining an organization organization like the american disc jockey association we have plenty of well, talented djs let's talk about that what are the benefits of joining well there's a number of great benefits the first is you have access to almost 200 hours 
200 hours of educational videos from our webinar uh, series, from my Drax Bite series, from all of the Las Vegas DJ shows, many other uh, conferences, all high quality educational content on performance, business, technology, uh, industry leading people, Alan Bird, Andy Ebon. Yeah, all those, all those videos are online in our online video campus. So someone that is a full member of ADJA can log in and view those videos at any time. Sure. We host your website for free. That's a $200 value. We save you 100 bucks on liability insurance. We are the only association with a full medical, dental, vision, life, and disability program for you that becomes a great value for our, our members. We have a great program with promo only that'll save you between 60 and 150 bucks a year on legally licensed professional music. We think that's a key and important factor of being a professional is having licensed music. We also have great deals on equipment with NLFX professional, save you good money, get great support after the sale. And there's literally a plethora of other benefits available in our members only area. Now, as for me, wow. and I've been serving our members, going around the country, supporting education, efforting to teach DJs how to build and grow their business. It's very important to have a business plan when you are starting out a business and you want your business to go to the next level. Let's say for you, with a business plan, what all takes, what is all, what, what is involved in putting together a business plan? Is it as easy as it well, sounds? Or? It, it, it's as easy as it sounds, and it's as complicated as you want it to be. Mm. The more accurate you want it to be, the more complicated it becomes. But basically, if you started with a simple spreadsheet and you start listing everything you spend money on, everything you spend money on, and then, you know, you put line items for profit and line items for equipment replacement and equipment repair and music and all the things that you're going to spend money on. And then you have a line item for how much you want to personally make as income, not profit. That's different. Profit is for the growth of the business. How much do you want to get paid as a salary to run your company? Well, you take that, you add up all of those costs, annualize those costs, and that tells you how much money you've got to make a year. You've got to bring in for that to be a balance. So then you, you basically, you can divide that by how many events you think you can work in a year, and that tells you how much money you need to charge. No emotion, no comparisons to other things at events. That just tells you flat out what you've got to charge to make a living, to make that business plan be a true document. And that usually staggers people. And their first temptation is to cheat and start cutting stuff out that they previously listed as a legitimate thing they spend money on. And I would like DJs to understand the goal is when you look at that number and it's a lot taller than where you are right now or where you, you thought it might be, instead of trying to reduce things to lower that number, instead look at how you can improve your performance, improve your sales ability, improve your branding and your marketing to create demand because in the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you're charging 500 bucks or five thousand dollars it's the same you have to create demand now certainly at the lower price points five to a thousand dollars it's easier to create demand because you sit in kind of a commodity sort of pricing point but the problem is that demand is not uniquely for you. And that, in my mind, isn't the real demand. It's not the demand that you want because the demand you want is where someone wants you. They don't want Tim or Bob or Sue or Sally. They want you. They want what you do. They want how you do it. They want you and your brand. That's the demand you need to figure out how to create. Because when you can create that demand through your talent and skills and ability of, with salesmanship, not to sell people, but to actually communicate effectively the value you provide and the services that you provide, 
and the memories that you'll create for them in their event, that translates into value. Because let's just be candid. In the absence of value, everybody shops on price. You want to look at post-event surveys. Surveys that don't ask for glowing praise, but ask instead the balance of what you did right, but more importantly, what could you have done better? What could you have done differently? Because if you do that, you will use those things for your benefit. Another example is put a video recorder in the room and record your events. Long, wide shot that basically shows you moving through the crowd for mobile work, uh, how you are on the mic. You all of a sudden learn you have a lot of repetitive phrasing. You all of a sudden learn that you become very pedantic in your mixing. It's just literally the same thing. Um, people think they're great mixers when they play nothing but 128 BPM. Well, it doesn't take much. Any DJ platform out here now, you just push a little button, and if you're feeding it a series of 128 beat per minute songs, they're all going to mix. But that doesn't make you a great DJ. Making you a great DJ is the ability to create deep and powerful, poignant memories in the hearts and minds of the clients and the guests, things they will never forget. Great information so far into the podcast. For those who are just tuning in to the BB Mobile Apps podcast, we are talking to the CEO of American Disc Jockey Association, Dr. Drax. We have him on the telephone lines. Uh, we've so far been discussing the ins and outs of starting out as a DJ, the common mistake, the fundamental mistake that most DJs make when they are out performing. How can professional DJs thrive in today's industry now that technology has advanced even more? The way you thrive in a technology driven environment is you gotta be, be more you gotta be more than music. You've got to provide something tangible. I gave a seminar a couple, three years ago called The Imitation Game. If you, if you follow any of the Apple big announcements and developer conference things, if you pay attention over the last 10 years, the amount of emphasis spent on artificial intelligence, machine vision, machine learning, I mean, your phone can unlock by looking at your face, and it can tell the difference even between twins. What you have to start to understand is if all you are is music in a box, you're a dinosaur that hasn't fallen in the tar pit because at some point the technology already exists to take a camera in a room, take some requests in advance electronically, which can easily be done uh, through software, and you start playing music. And because it's connected to the Internet of Things, it draws from a database of 100 million other DJs in the world of what did they play after Celebration? What did they play after Old Town Road? And the machine is going to learn and it's going to adapt and it's going to recognize the people in the audience as 200 un unique souls and it's going to be able to keep track of how many times person one, two, or five has been on the floor versus there. Imagine a bar. They want to rotate the dance floor the software is going to rotate that floor perfectly. It's going to do almost everything DJs do perfectly. It's going to know music better than you. It's going to harmonically mix better than you. It's going to beat mix better than you because it will, it will respond in nanoseconds to adjustments. It will see people leaving the floor and it will immediately go, what got played after the song that had a good reply or a good response, it will shift to it. The way you have to do it to be relevant in the age of technology is you have to have personality and skills which are unique to you that can't be replaced by hardware. If all you do is roll in, throw a lappy up on, on a stand and play music and say you're reading the crowd because you go, oh, it's a bunch of, bunch of 50 or 60 year olds, they're probably going to be cool with disco. They're probably going to be cool with, you know, some old tunes and this, 
you're probably not going to have too much thing. Ah, it's a prom. It's all a bunch of 15 or 16 to 18 year olds. Well, all you got to do is look at the demographic. Is it a heavily urban audience? Is it a heavily uh, rural audience where you're seeing a lot of big belt buckles and cowboy hats? Those are big signs going to tell you what, what, where your direction is going to go. Not always, but more likely. I had an event where the client said, oh, it's going to be totally, you totally need to be urban and hip hop. I said, cool, we're all good with that. I'm all set up, ready to rock that until I start noticing everybody coming in has got those dinner plate size belt buckles on. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking they don't look like the people that are going to get down with P. Diddy and, and Ludacris. So I had to evolve and adapt. Technology is going to look at those identifiers and it's going to be able to instantly adapt. And so what you have at your disposal as a DJ is a voice. Knowing when to say and when not to say. What to say and what not to say. But creating a unique, engaging, fun personality that they will want to connect with. Connections. People value experiences. So that's kind of my longer answer to the technology is talent. Honed, sharpened, polished talent. And not everybody's as talented as everybody else. But figure out what you can do uniquely different, what's unique about you. Put a light on that. Hone it, polish it, clean it up and make it desirable to the consumer. And you'll have no problem selling at an elevated rate. Now, what about workshops? I know that there are some DJs that do offer classes and workshops for beginners, for beginning DJs. Uh, What about workshops? Are they helpful for the beginning DJ? And uh, if so, does an organization like the American Disc Jockey Association offer that? Uh, we don't offer workshops. We support workshops actually at trade conventions because it's more uh, cost-effective for people to attend. My take on workshops is the following. Don't take workshops because people tell you you need to take Joe Blow's workshop. That's not useful to you. Have a face-to-face conversation with yourself and list on paper the things you suck at. What are the things you really aren't very good at? and take workshops in the order needed to improve the things you're worst at. And the reason is, is because you will make the biggest progress economically from improving the things you're not good at. If you're not good at selling or communicating your value, becoming incredibly more polished and talented will help, but not nearly as much assisting your bottom line as learning how to effectively sell. And that doesn't mean a polyester suit, and pressuring people to buy. It means learning that, the, that sales is an effective conversation between people with mutually uh, shared objectives. You want to work, they want a great party, and evolving around that. Re- learn the, the lesson everybody loves to buy, but nobody likes to be sold. Don't sell people. Show them things they would love to buy. Show them value. And so with workshops, if you feel you're not really good at sales, there are a number of sales trainers that you can get to. They may not be in the DJ business. And truthfully, they don't really need to be. Because sales is all about transference of value, transference of knowledge, and creating a need in them. Because you've got to get past they want you to they need you. And so with workshops, if you find that you say, mm, and, uh, um, uh, or you say, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with saying ladies and gentlemen. But the issue is if you say ladies and gentlemen, now at this time, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, very soon the bride and groom are going to come out or very soon the president of the company is going to come out and address us, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a great event. We hope you're having a marvelous time, ladies and gentlemen. That's a problem. I even did that once at a national DJ conference, totally by accident. I allowed myself to get off off script, 
And man, did I hose that out. I got teased for months. So the point being, for that person, I'd say, you might want to learn some scripting. You might want to attend a master of ceremonies or a workshop or two, or a microphone skills workshop. So many mobile DJs, they clutch the microphone like they want to eat it, like it's a popsicle or something. You know, they got it right up around the ball, and they got the ball right up against their mouth. Well, when you do, your voice becomes very percussive. That's why the beatboxers had the mic up against their mouth, because when they went, poof, 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 it's the sound it created of having the mic up against their mouth. Mm-hmm. You want to have the mic appropriate, or wear a headset mic. I like a headset because it leaves my hands free to gesture, or it just makes me feel more comfortable. I'm not worried about positioning. So you might want to take a microphone skills workshop. You might want to take a master of ceremonies workshop. And the best thing I can tell you about taking a master of ceremonies workshop is learning pacing, phrasing, and learning how to cut. I spent some time in the acting field before I got back into the mobile DJ business. And one of the biggest lessons I learned was cutting what is said. I worked with some people in Los Angeles and I would look at scripts they'd produced and I'd read it and I thought, well, that sounds really good. And they go, yeah, but it's too long. This, this scene will take too long. And they would cut 60% out of the dialogue and the scene would still have the same emotion, the same connection, the same impact, everything. But they learned to cut. And I learned that when I was going to write a script for an event mm-hmm. to write it, cut half of it, write it again, cut half again. And when you come back, now you're getting to the point you're saying only the things that are important to them over the microphone. So a master of ceremonies workshop can help you a lot with that. It can help you a lot with poise, with remembering to look up at the audience. I memorized my scripts so that I wouldn't be looking at an iPad or a piece of paper and I wouldn't have the shuffling paper or the paper folding over on the clipboard kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's those kinds of skills. Another thing I would tell you, DJs to do is learn to really mix and mixing doesn't mean how well you can beat mix two songs that are 128 BPM or 110 and 128 but rather instead learn to mix country into hip hop learn to mix R&B into uh, top 40 music into pop music learn to take license and learn how to harmonically mix learn how to bring flavors together and textures because that will make your audio really interesting and unique. And it will take a a pretty uh, good amount of time, I believe, before machines will will catch up to that. Oh, and it will catch up because the Internet of Things will will make it so. You can open most mobile DJ software that connects to the Internet of any kind, Mm -hmm. and then you select a song, and it will tell you, 98% 98% of the other people that played this played this already. That already exists. Right. And it won't be long before the machines advance. But in any case, get your skills hot. Learn to mix. And I don't mean just the mechanics of the mixing. Learn that to be to the point that you can create showmanship. That you can do things that people go, wow, that was really cool. And the sound was really cool. When you go to a DJ convention, the most absolutely god-awful annoying thing is listening on the show floor three days for six hours every day, DJ scratching. They spend all of the time scratching and none of the time actually demonstrating fluid mixes, mixing tastes and genres and things that create something interesting that you want to listen to. So think about your audience. Even if you got a high school audience, Yeah, you might scratch, you might do some creative mix elements, but do more. Make it interesting that they want to actually 
be a part of that. They want to listen to what you're you're performing. I, I want to backtrack just a little bit, and uh, you, you said, yeah, and you said mics, uh, which of course is one of the most important things that a DJ must have. Um, there, there are some DJs that don't talk into the mic at all; they just play the music. But then you have your DJs, like a kid Capri, that would get on the mic and spin records and talk just to get the crowd hype or to continue to get the crowd hype. Uh, what would inspire DJs to be better on the mic? When you watch any top flight host on television, the best make everything seem effortless. Mm -hmm. And the more you make your microphone work, become the trade craft of your business, that your microphone work is so effortless, there's no stuttering and stammering, and that when you speak, you say to the audience only what they really need to hear. You deliver it, and you deliver it emotionally. That's why maybe taking an improv class or getting involved in community theater could be good, or taking an acting workshop. Learn that words need to express more than knowledge or information. Words need to communicate feelings. It needs to create feelings. As you do that, your microphone work will be more valuable. Been in the business, in the industry for over 30 years, uh, Dr. Drax on the telephone line, CEO of the American Disc Jockey Association right here on the BB Mobiles podcast, giving so much great information um, to people who are uh, up and coming DJs and becoming a DJ for the first time conferences and expos um, it is the place to be to get your face out there and to get your brand out there uh, but for you being in the industry for over 30 years and you experienced a, a lot of the things that you have seen at conferences and at expos which conferences or expos are better for DJs to attend you know, not to put bias to one expo or conference or another. I tend to like smaller regional events because I like the educational elements. However, if you really want to see all the gear, there's really one, and that's going to be the Atlantic City Expo. That is the gear show of our industry. But again, if you come back to, I don't believe you should go to expos at all unless you have a focused objective. I mean, if you've got the money to just go and have a party in Las Vegas or have a party in Atlantic City or go wherever the conference is, okay, it's vacation. Go do it. But when you look at the cost to attend most conferences, approaches $1,000 with airfare, hotel, and food for three days or four days, in my opinion – there should be an objective. I'm going there to learn X. I need to learn about X. And they have a guy talking about X or a girl talking about X or a guy demonstrating it or a girl demonstrating it at conference Y. I need to be there because that, learning that, getting some ideas and information will mean increased revenue to my business. And that's the only reason you should be doing any of this stuff. Put your ego on the back burner. If it's not doing things which generate you revenue, why do it? I have a DJ who is up and coming and new. Um, he knows that he has to go to these conferences and these expos from time to time. His concern is travel experiences. Um, what advice can you give to DJs who go to conferences and expos? How do they cover the cost or, or what do they need to do to uh, help budget their commute and their travel when going to conferences or expos? Well, well, you do that in a bit. You do that in a business plan. You say, I am going to spend in the next year $3,000 on education or $5,000 or I want to go to DJ Expo, a pass is going to cost me a couple hundred bucks. Airfare will cost me 400 bucks. Hotel will cost me 600 bucks. 
Uh, food will probably cost me another 300 bucks. Therefore, I need to really budget probably about 15 or 1600 bucks for Expo. Probably a little bit more because there'll be, depending where you are, there'll be rental cars or trains or whatever. And so you put that in your budget and you factor it into your pricing and you go, okay, for that to happen, I need to be charging this much more for every event to cover that. Continuing education should be an ongoing expense for people that are active in the craft of being a DJ mm -hmm. and wanting to improve and excel. I have friends that are, that are in a very, very small town and those three guys are killing it. They are, they are earning probably eight times as much as other people I know in markets with more customers and more opportunity. They're killing it because they put a high value on continuing education, on improving their craft, improving their skills in all areas, sales, marketing, business management, staff management if they're running a multi-system company, uh, mixing, microphone skills, master of ceremony skills, storytelling skills, mm -hmm. announcing skills. All of these things can help them greatly, and they have. And so, again, the DJ should simply go, I'm not going to any show that doesn't have something on the radar that's going to specifically benefit my business by being there. And so you start off maybe the year before building up some money, some reserves, so that next year you go, okay, which show do I want to go to? Well, you don't make that decision and pull the trigger till they tell you, what the content's going to look like. And then you can say, well, okay, oh, there's going to be a workshop, a master of ceremonies workshop near that time or that show. Or there's going to be some other element that will be great at that show. I've thought about getting into photo booths. Oh, well, there's a photo booth show at the same time as a DJ show. Makes sense. I'll go there because I can in investigate that while I still get some good knowledge. Again, you just have to look at it, take the emotion of going to Las Vegas or Atlantic City or wherever out of it and go, what will I learn by being there? I mean, two of my favorite conferences are Midwest DJs Live and Armed DJs. Marquee Show in Chicago is an up-and-coming show with super great content. Very good content at the Marquee. You know, if you go to learn, you'll learn. And so that's the kind of direction I'd give DJs. Pick the show you attend based on what it's going to do for your business. Dr. Drax, we only have a few minutes left right here on the BV Mobile Apps podcast. And I want to know, uh, many DJs want to know, are there any online resources that you recommend? Online resources. Uh, largely I would, I would not recommend social media groups as the place to learn knowledge. It's a great place to learn what not to do. It's a great place to converse and network. And yeah, there are some nuggets you can pick up from time to time, but I would tell you the, the best resources is actually people in your own market develop an ADJA local chapter there, network with people, find a mentor, maybe in another market that, that is recognized as being really good at something and have them help you. They can mentor you in a process of personal growth. Obviously the American Disc Jockey Association is very valuable for our members because they can go online in our online video campus and access about 200 hours of education anytime it suits them. They can watch the stuff over and over and over and over and over again, and it's all free to them. They can just watch it till, till their ears bleed because they can watch it until they absorb every syllable, every nugget of knowledge that could be gained. It's a tremendous value. If a person uses three of the benefits we provide our members, their membership is literally free. 
you know, you have to ask, what would it cost you to have access to 200 hours of focused, great educational content? You know, my last pitch in, in this would be DJs, buy legal music. There isn't a plethora of least licensed pool services. There's about six. Obviously, that's why we recommend and endorse promo only. It's the world's largest pool, and it's a great resource for you as DJs. The elements of a great DJ starts with legal music, not garbage off of YouTube, not garbage off of Spotify. Those are the things that you want to use as resources. Because when you, you're getting le legit music, you're getting music with breakbeats, you're getting music with acapellas, you're getting music with intro edits and outro edits, all things that help you become a better functional performing DJ providing the musical element. But when you do, you also become connected to others that use, say, promo only, and you start networking because people kind of go, oh, you use promo only or RPM top hits or ERG. Uh, yeah, you're a legit DJ. I want to network with you. Full stop, I don't want to network with people that use stolen music. And a lot of the pools out there, that's what they are. They're selling you stolen music. They're not paying the royalties artists. Full stop. I won't network with those people until they discontinue that problem. I'll be cordial, and I will, I will help them around the periphery, but I'm not going to delve deep in their business as long as they're basically stealing from the people that create the art we use to make a living. What advice... When it comes to selecting an insurance, what's what's the right advice to give to up and coming beginning DJs when it comes to selecting insurance? Because me and you know that insurance is very important as well. Well, insurance is really simple. You want to you be a part of ADJ and you want to use the longest running policy in the mobile DJ industry. That's our policy with Fireman's Fund. It's a million dollar policy per incident, $2 million aggregate for $175. That's the member price. It's You can sign online 24-7. You can get online additional insured certificates 24-7. And unlike other policies that have come and gone, this policy will be there when you need it. There's a plethora of companies getting into the market because they believe that selling insurance to DJs is a big profit center. Well, they're all going to disappear when they have their first loss and they lose 150 or 200,000 and they've been selling DJ insurance for $25 a month and they have no premium depth to cover those losses. The programs will be will be canned because that's just how it is. I mean, there's a reason why ADJ's insurance is the oldest longest running policy because it's rock solid and, and so what you want to look at is a company like Fireman's Fund it's part of the Alias group it's the third largest insurance carrier in the world in the world our program is exceeding 20 years old at this point there isn't another DJ insurance policy out there that's been in existence for 20 years without big price increases, without big changes in terms. ADJA is the association of the mobile DJ industry. The ADJA has the very best liability insurance. We have the very best health care. The number one thing that stops most mobile DJs from becoming full-time is health care. We've got access to affordable health care. We provide DJs all the tools they need for success. Obviously, I like our policy because it's consistent and it's been around and stable for a long time. And speaking of which, the website is ADJA. That's ADJA.org. That's correct. And people, visitors can go online and find out more information about the American Disc Jockey Association as well as the ADJA Professional Code of Conduct. And you all have a very strict yep. conduct. 
um, on the website. Do you want to just really quick explain to our listeners what that code of conduct is? Exactly. We want people, we want people to basically understand our code is not very onerous for people that are ethical and honest. For those that are unethical and dishonest, it's pretty daunting. One of the things that stick out to me, Dr. Drax, is use a written contract, clearly stating all charges, services, products, performance ex- expectations, and other essential information. Uh, you have some DJs that do a business, run a business, and they don't have contracts at all. But this, to me, is very important, uh, the most important one uh, on the website. So contracts are very important to have and, and very important to look over. And if you have an attorney or a legal representation, I advise any DJ to have an attorney present to look over a contract. Absolutely. Dr. Drax, before we let you go, we got to talk about the app. The app is available courtesy of BV Mobile Apps. Tell our listeners what they can expect from the app and, and what does your app offer to listeners as well as DJs? Well, the, 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 the great part about the BV Mobile app is it largely takes all of the great data from your website and mobilizes it so you can uh, distribute your website basically to consumers at shows by giving them a card with a simple link that they go to and they can download the app and inside the app you can structure the content that you want them to receive in a fashion that becomes excellent to them. So the app is available. Uh, you can get it right now. Uh, you can get it from any um, app marketplace that has apps, of course, and you're going to get such great information, a lot of great things from the app, from the American Disc Jockey app. Um, the American Disc Jockey Association app, I should say, ADJA. Yep. And, and also, um, people can follow you on social media as well, right? Yes, they can follow us on Facebook at 4ADJA. We're on uh, Facebook, we're on Twitter, same thing, 4ADJA, although we don't tweet a whole lot. Uh, I'm kind of leaving that to the president. Let them have the Twitter storm. Uh but people can certainly reach us on Facebook. I'm available anytime they can reach out to me via Facebook, PM me there, call the national office, 888-723-5776. They can email me office at adja.org. And uh, we look forward to helping DJs to build and grow their business because that's what we really are here to do. It's what we love to do. And one more time, give out the information again on how DJs can go about joining with the American Disc Jockey Association. Well, it's very easy to join. You just go to adja.org slash join. You can either download a PDF, fill it in, and fax it in, or you can fill out the online uh, membership application, select the membership level that you want. The membership levels which come with all the things I've discussed are the ones priced at two ninety nine. dollars and higher, or one ninety nine and higher. Excuse me. If somebody just wants access to buy the insurance at our member price, they can select the insurance only aspect. But it's really the better value is the full membership at one ninety nine or two ninety nine if they live in a market with a local chapter. And again, they can call me with any questions. I'm happy to answer anything they need to help them build and grow their business. And you know, you have to tell the DJs because it says here on the website that you are home to the best DJs on planet earth. But why should they join? Why should they join the ADJA though? Why? Well, that's really simple. The only way you become the best is hanging with the best, learn from the best, be part of, be part of the organization that has pioneered this industry, the organization that has defended this industry every time it's been attacked, the organization that has supported education everywhere. If you look at trade shows, we're at every trade show. Others that claim to be associations won't go to any show that there isn't a big number of people going to because they're afraid their economic return will, excuse me, edit that burp out, uh, because they're afraid that their return on investment won't be good enough for them. We're not here for an ROI. 
we're here for giving members and DJs a vehicle to become better. Members get a huge ROI because, again, if they use three things, website hosting, insurance, and music, not only have, did it cost them nothing to be a member, it's now put money back in their pocket. So they get a very hard, high ROI, and that helps fund our mission and our objectives to educate DJs. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Drax, we really appreciate you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak to myself and our BB Mobile Apps podcast listeners. Uh, and the app, once again, is available to download and get. And the website, once again, is adja.org adja.org that's correct thank you so much for having me sean it was great to be here tonight thank you so much and also your additional website all your information is on drdrax.com drdrax.com that's, that's correct website as well too well, thank you so much it's been correct. an honor all right thank you so much sir all right ladies and gentlemen this has been another great edition of the bb mobile apps podcast Make sure you go to the website to bvmobileapps.com and get your app customized today. You need that in your life. It's bvmobileapps.com. And you can also follow me on social media at Sean Garvey on Facebook, Sean Garvey ATL on Instagram and on Twitter. This has been another amazing edition of the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. And we will talk to you again very soon. Take care. It's a new year. It's a new day for starting it over, starting the day. Thank you for listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. For more information about BV Mobile Apps, visit the, the website, website. bvmobileapps.com. Don't forget to follow BV Mobile Apps on social media at BV Mobile Apps. Tune in again next time on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast.